Today we're going to be showing you the rebuild process on the large square style weld on 12,000 pound jacks. This is part number TJD-12000SP-F2. Now, typically these jacks are going to be welded on your trailer and the last thing you want to do is cut them off, grind it down and weld a new one on. So here at E-Trailer we've got the full assortment of replacement parts. Now this in particular is the Ram brand or the E-Trailer brand jack. But a few of the different replacement parts that are available are going to be the cap that's going to fit up on the top of the jack, keeps out the moisture, keeps out the dirt. This is part number TJD-12 000 CP. We also have the gear kit. This is part number TJD-12000 GR. We've got our bearing replacement. This sits in there and reduces the friction so we don't have all that weight riding metal on metal. You can see the inside portion of our bearing spins while the outside portion spins freely. This part number is TJD-12000-BR. We're also going to have the return spring. This is going to draw that drop leg back up. That's what causes it to spring back up. This is part number tjd 12 Zero 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 dash RSP. We even have the clip for the handle. Now this is going to come unfinished. These need to be welded on in a location of your choice, however you want to store your handle. This is part number TJD dash one two zero 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 dash CLIP. We're going to have the replacement shaft. This is the handle shaft, so our handle can connect on either side here. It's also going to come with the bushings that fit in the side of the jack. This is part number TJD-12000-SHABUS. And then lastly, we're going to have the replacement handle. Now this handle can be mounted on either side. It has the vertical clevis. Its part number is TJD-12000-HD. Now to remove our cap, we've got the two bolts that hold it in place. There's going to be one here, and caddy corner, there will be another one. Small socket, in our case it's going to be an 8 millimeter. we're going to use to remove that. That one out of the way, do the same thing for the other one. And then if it's just the cap you're replacing, well at this point you'll grab your new cap and we'll just thread those bolts right into that same location. But go a little bit further into it. The next thing we're going to do is get our handle removed. Now you really only need to remove the handle if you plan on replacing it. If you don't plan on replacing it, you can get this shaft out without removal. But we're going to show you how to replace it, so it's coming off as well. To do that, use a 14 millimeter. Now your bolt's not going to be very tight here. You want it to be able to slide. You want the handle to be able to slide in and out there. It's going to be a washer on each side there. And then the handle. Just set it to the side. Now if we look at the internals of our jack, you can see the smaller gear. It's going to fit on the handle shank or handle shaft. And that larger of the base gear, it's going to sit down on the bottom. Now to see what we're doing here, give you a little bit better look, we're going to get all this grease out of here. You want to be sure you've got some grease on hand during your rebuild so you can get it replaced with nice fresh grease. Doesn't necessarily have to be a high temp grease or anything like that. Let's get it all kind of wiped off there. Alright, that gives you a good look. You can see right where that pen's going to go through the gear here comes out of the other side. So you just need to drive that out. I'm going to use a punch for that. Small hammer and a flat tip punch is going to be your best bet. You want it to be up on a solid surface or of course if it's on your trailer it's already going to be on a solid surface. You won't have to worry too much about it. Now once we get that partially started we don't want to knock it out of there too far. It's going to get captured in that lower gear. So we just want to 
be sure we've got enough room as we do that so we can still rotate it. Then here from the outside, just grab it with a pair of pliers. Just kind of wiggle and pull. And we'll get it pulled out. Now the pin for the handle is going to be the one that's got the splines in it. And then the other pin that comes with your gear kits for that base pin. We're going to show you that in just a minute. Now, of course, since this is a brand new jack, we're going to be reusing all the parts that we are removing in the process. But this will give you a step-by-step -step on how to get yours replaced. And once that pins out, the handle shaft should be pretty free to move side to side. We're going to pull that out. Just like that. Your little spacer tube that's there, get it pulled out. Get our gear pulled out. A little recess there, that's going to go towards the outside, so you just want to keep that in mind when you put it back together. And then with our replacement shaft for the handle, you have these bushings. That just spreads out the amount of area in which we crank that handle on rather than it just riding on that thin piece of metal on the outer tube of the jack. So we'll get both of those popped out of the way. Now we'll be able to reach in and so if we pull out on that larger gear, you'll see there's a slot in there. You can see the pin. Now that pin is just a free floating pin and the gear keeps it in position. So kind of captures that pin in there. And this will set aside. And that base pin will just pull out. Now at this point, the only two components we haven't seen are going to be the bearing and the return spring. To get to those, we need to lift the outer housing, or the outer tube of the jack off of the inner tube. So we'll stand it up. Grab there at the bottom. Lift straight up on it. There you'll see our bearing. That's what reduces that friction and prevents metal on metal contact. Now we're going to remove the four lock nuts. And at that point we can lift out our screw. Now that's going to be what really drives our jack up and down. As we rotate that, that increases the distance between this inner tube and our outer tube, which sits on top. So as that expands, our jack leg goes down, and those are extremely hard to damage. As long as you keep grease inside of it, they should last a lifetime. So this typically isn't something that you ever replace. It's going to be that screw. And we get that lifted up and out. We can set it aside. And right inside here, you get the grease off of it. You'll be able to see it a little better. You can see there's a small tab there that our return spring or that our rebound spring or drop leg return spring is connected to. So we want to unhook it right there. We just kind of want to bend that open just a little bit there. Once we open that up a little bit, we should be able to just use kind of a hook pick and pull up on that spring. It's going to be caught right in there. And now we are going to be releasing a little bit of spring tension. So as I kind of pop it off of that catch, it's probably going to pop down towards the bottom of the jack. Now that we've got that removed, we'll stand our jack inner leg back up. Now we'll rotate our pin. I'm going to lift it up. And then just engage it in one of those higher holes. That's going to give us access right in here to the bottom where that spring is connected. And you'll see right inside here, the spring's going to be connected to a small catch that's on the bottom foot plate of the jack. I'm going to locate exactly which corner of the square tube that that's on. You're going to have a little notch in the bottom of the foot plate. Now once you unhook the end of the spring to it, you'll bring in your new spring, hook it back on, and then we'll lower our jack back down. Then we'll want to reattach it at the top. Now we'll reach back down in there with our pick or whatever you decide. 
we want to bring that up and get it reattached into that small hole on their tab on the top. And we'll get our spring pulled out a little bit here and we may need to just flex that open a little bit more to get it engaged. And we'll have it reconnected to our tab. Now that our spring back in place, we can drop our screw assembly back in. And we'll want to replace our four lock nuts. Now these weren't fully tightened down. We'll just run all of these down until they come to their stopping point. The uh, studs that they stick on are not fully threaded. So it gives you a good reference point for where you'll stop. Now we can slide our bearing back down into place. With that in, now we'll slide the outer tube back over that inner tube. Lay this assembly back down and we can see where the screw comes out right there in the middle. Now we'll take the smooth pin, which is our base pin. It's gonna slide through the hole in the screw. And we want it about centered. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we want it pretty close to centered in that screw. And we'll align the groove in our gear up with that pin and slide it into position. As it seats, it should be about flush with the top of the screw. It's not gonna be exactly flush, but it should be pretty close. Now our bushings, these are gonna go from the inside out on each side. Now these, if you need replacements, are going to come with the handle shaft replacement. And we'll bring our handle shaft and our gear. That gear is going to engage the lower gear there, that's important. And then our shaft is going to slide right through that. Put our spacer pipe in place. And slide right through that and on through. Now as we slide this in, we just need to line up the hole for our pin in the gear with the hole for our pin in the shank. And we'll take the pin that has the grooves in it. We need to get that in to where it's nice and flush. Just like that. Now we do have grease zerks one located here on the bottom, and then one located down a little bit lower. You can decide to use those to grease it after you've got it reassembled, or you can take a few minutes now and kind of fill this area in with grease. That way you can just visually see it and make sure that you get it fully engaged into the gears. And we can see we're right back. Nice, operating smoothly. Now it's time to bring our cap back into position and replace the bolts that we removed earlier. Now your new cap does come with new hardware, so if it's completely missing, that's not a big deal. Now we'll want to get those re-secured. Just like that, and then we can replace our handle. Bring our bolt up through the bottom or the top, doesn't matter. So make sure that we've got our flat washer on both sides. One there, one here. And then we're just gonna tighten that up enough so that we fully engage that locking portion of the nylon lock nut. But we see we've got a little bit of slack there still to take out. That's gonna be too tight. You want that to be able to slide. So we'll back it off just a touch. That's where we'll want it. Just to where that handle can easily slide in and out. That way we can tip it down and connect it into our clip, whether we weld that onto our jack, whether we want it on our trailer, wherever we decide to put it. That's gonna complete our rebuild of the 12,000 pound weld on jack. We hope this will show you how with just a few parts and a little bit of time, 
You can rebuild your existing jack rather than having to buy a complete new one and get it re-welded to the trailer. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.